Next, we'll talk about guards. A guard is a position in which you hold your body and sword to defend yourself without having to do much of anything. It's a way to prepare against an opponent's oncoming attack. And also, this is what we stand in while we're initiating our own offense. But we alluded to the outside guard, so we'll start there. So you can move your feet however you want. Um, if you want to practice being in second position, that's great. But let's just stand, try to learn how to use our arms first. Now, what we want to do is we, we don't want to have our arm fully extended. There are some traditions and uh, masters within this tradition that do this. Some even have it really refused with your elbow almost touching your body. Um, let's go in the middle. So your arm is slightly bent, the elbow roughly in line with the bottom of your rib cage, and then your forearm perpendicular to the ground. Now, what we want to do is be in a handshake grip. We're not parrying yet. This is just a preparatory position, so we want to kind of have our point threatening our opponent. From this position, we want to have our point directed at their right eye, like this. We'll discuss why this is later, but long story short, this allows us to adequately defend our outside line. That's why it's called the outside guard, while giving us a little bit more secure defense by having it cross the middle of the line slightly, versus if we were pointing at their left eye, it changes the angles a little bit. We're not gonna worry about that right now. So your point is directed towards their right eye, defending the outside of your body. Now, what we don't wanna do is be over here. Yes, you could call this an outside guard, but it's too much. We want to be as little to the outside as possible to make sure our outside line is secure without giving anything extra away. And we definitely don't want to be an outside guard where our outside is not defended. This is our outside guard. Opposite to that is the inside guard. Now, we, our arm is more or less in the same position. We want to move just enough to defend our inside line. We're not out here. We're not out here. We want to make sure our inside line is secure. If an attack if they choose to attack our inside line, our sword is already there. So it closes that inside line. That's why it's called the inside guard. Now for the sake of this, your point is not no longer in their right eye, it's in their left eye. Again, crossing that middle line. We'll talk about the reasons for that another day. So we have the inside guard, outside guard. Inside guard, outside guard. Those are the two guards we need to focus on. There's a lot, but we'll cover another subject first. So now you know the basics of the inside and outside guard position. How do we actually use them if someone's trying to attack us? So from an outside guard, we can say that it'd be relatively foolhardy for them to attack the outside line. That's called closing the line. They would see our sword in this position. They go like, OK, I can't attack over here, so I have to attack over here. This is what allows us to actually kind of think ahead. By going in this position, I know the next attack is probably going to be over here versus having an attack that can come in anywhere if my sword isn't really there. An attack can come anywhere. This says it has to come over here, at least in theory. We'll talk about how to avoid that in the future. But an attack is going to come to the inside line. So for the sake of this argument, imagine someone is going to cut our left cheek. Now what we want to do is, from this position, move our sword to defend with a hammer fist with the lower three or four inches of the blade. Now, why do we defend with the lower three or four inches of the blade? Well, let's go back to some vocab words. If you take a sword, you can divide the blade in half at the halfway point. Everything from that halfway point down to the, where the top of your hand guard is, is called the fort or the strong of the blade. Everything on the other end, from the middle to the tip, is the weak or the foible. Now, why is it called weak and strong? It all has to do with leverage. Now, if you imagine this is a lever, my hand is the thing acting on the lever. That's exerting the force. The closer you are to that lever, the stronger it is. You can resist force here very easily. Versus if something's over here, it's a lot weaker. It takes very little effort to move the weak around. So when we're defending, we want to make sure that they can't move our sword. So we're going to defend with the strongest part of our sword, which is the, lower th the, strong, the lowest three or four inches, which is the strongest part of the strong. Versus if we try and defend in the middle, we might get it a little bit wrong, hit up here, and now they have our weak. And if we defend with the weak, they can kind of just push our sword away as they cut us. So by defending with the lower three or four inches, we stay as safe as possible. And if we get it wrong, it still hits our strong up here. Or if we get it wrong the other way, it hits this nice beefy handguard that we have that'll hopefully keep us safe. So defending with the lower three or four inches. So from that hammer fist, or sorry, the handshake grip in the extended outside guard, we're going to see an attack coming towards our left cheek. We're going to switch to that hammer fist to give us all the strength as possible and move our lower three or four inches to defend our cheek. Now, we are on the inside parry. Easy enough. Now, if we're on the inside guard, we're on that handshake grip facing towards, um, have our point online. They cut towards our outside cheek. We're going to defend in much the same way, adopt that hammer fist, 
go to that outside guard, moving the three or four inches of the blade directly in line with where their blade is coming in. Now, if you look on both of these situations, my inside parry and outside parry, my blade is pretty vertical. This is important. If we defend with our blade kind of in line still, it doesn't take a whole lot of effort for them to accidentally hit our weak and push our blade away. Same with that outside. This is awkward, but whatever. Um, if we kind of keep our point online, it's easy for a cut to get to a weaker part of our blade and push it away and still cut us. If we're in this vertical position, they have to travel a long way to hit a weaker part of our sword. This ensures they hit a strong part of our sword, but also it's a big wall of steel. If you look here, if I defend here, my sword is, a, you can't really see what it's defending. So if I get it wrong a little higher, a little low, I could miss entirely. Versus when it's in this position, it's literally a wall of steel. So I have a bigger margin of error. My inside guard, or inside parry, outside parry, having this wall of steel will keep you safe. So for the sake of practice, we're in an outside guard, an attack comes to our inside cheek, defend with a sword vertical in a nice strong position, defending with a lower three or four inches, go to your inside parry, imagine an attack coming towards the outside, outside parry, outside guard, inside parry, inside guard, outside parry, outside guard. Now it's also important, if you look at that last one, you don't need to parry out here. In much the same principle as the guard positions, you just need to defend, move your hand just enough to get that defensive um, steel in front of their blade. Just enough, just enough. You do not need to be out here. When we discuss feints, we'll discuss this in the future, but if you're constantly moving from left to right, this is a large opening for your opponent to attack in the middle of. Keep it nice and tight, keep yourself nice and safe.